Hello, my name is Mercury and welcome to the brand episode of BDFA. Today, I am alone today. I'll be discussing the latest MonsterVerse uh, uh, installment. Sorry. The latest installment in the MonsterVerse Monarch Legacy of Monsters. The f- first season, hopefully, maybe, of Monarch Legacy of Monsters. So, yeah. Um. I know I'm a bit late, a, li- a, li- a little over two weeks late for uh, for, for, t- for to cover this show, but we're, we're, that's that's that is earlier than some of the shows we've talked about here. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get into it, but you know, um, this show had to live up to our expectations. Like you probably, I I I released my. My, my review of Skull Island, the first show in the MonsterVerse, and the one in the MonsterVerse summits that was before this one. Um, and I didn't really like that show. But so Monarch Legacy of Monsters had a lot to had a lot to to really make up for in terms of quality for uh, for the MonsterVerse in te- in television. So did it do that? Eh, <laughs> I mean, theoretically, in a sense, kind of. So yeah, um, we're gonna do it. There's a lot of things to talk about in this, in here. I do have quite a lot of notes. So yeah, um, without further ado, let's begin. So the first thing I want to talk about is the uh, is the thing we always start with the CGI. So the CGI is one of the best. At sample of CGI I've seen in a TV show, it's very indicative that the MonsterVerse, which is one of the biggest multi uh, multimedia franchises, like, like cinematic franchises, that ever really existed, <laughs> right now, featuring you know Godzilla and Kong and all these different uh, characters, but it's. It's very indicative that Marvel couldn't get their shit together while doing something like this, and sometimes not even like Star Wars could could, could do something like this. And God, in, in, in the CGI here is very well done and looks and looks movie quality. There are there's one scene which is with uh, Bill Randa, the star, uh, John Goodman, Bill Randa, that isn't very good in terms of CGI. It's very rough. But that's really the only example of that. And some things I gotta say, probably said during the trailer or trailer episodes, that I feel like some of the scenes in the show are really, are really obvious. Like just very, are very obviously green screen, which is one of the things that I criticized and was kind of hoping it wouldn't, it, it that wouldn't be something that, that that was in the show quite a lot because. What I saw from the show, um, it did look like it was a lot of um, green screen and all that, and I didn't really like that. So, I'm glad to say that it isn't mostly green screen. The only one, the only one I can, uh, the only one I can clearly 100% say is green screen, is the is the scene with John Goodman, which is one of really it's one of the first scenes and it is clearly green screen and it's not very good it's, it doesn't do a, a, a great job of hiding it so i i don't know it, it's it, it my my concerns were there for like five minutes and then quickly dissip, dissipated and you know we saw more things and i gotta say the, the other things that are very much green screen that were done with that couldn't be done with anything else that wasn't green screen, isn't obviously green screen, which is bravo. So the only bad instance of CGI in the entire show is in the opening scene, which yeah, um, not 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 the greatest first impression, but it does get better and it really does get better. Godzilla looks amazing. It, it, even later on, even like. It, the first episode has like the worst CGI, but like by by, by proxy, everything else is, looks so good. But yeah, no, uh, the CGI is very impressive to have been, to have been done here. I don't know how, how much this. 
um, I don't know how much this cost. I don't know what the budget for this series was. I, I mean, it's probably not public, but, you know, it's, it, it's interesting to see how, I don't know if the budget is a thing that's public, but I don't, it's probably gonna be lower than, than, uh, than what it was in, you know, like, in, in any Marvel show, but yeah, um, I cannot find the budget. But it, 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 but for, for what, however much budget it had, it did very well in its DGI department. Now, um, what it didn't do so well is in the character department. And this is pretty much the biggest, um, the biggest problem everybody has to show when it's the characters. So we're gonna go over all of them that I can really think about. And yeah. And I, I and once I have noted down here. So yeah. First up is Kate Randa. Now Kate Randa has wasted potential. Oh well had potential and it was wasted. I feel like what they were going with the character was very interesting, but it ultimately went nowhere. So, she was a survivor of the events of God's Blood since 2014, which is now known as G-Day. And she is traumatized. She was a teacher and she lost all of her and she lost most of her students due to Godzilla. Interesting enough. It, it's 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 interesting enough. Like that it works. But the main gripe I have is that they don't do anything with it. It it's set up in the first episode it's very very big and she, in the first episode she's having panic attacks and she was she having like she's having like flashbacks and you know all that shit that is you know She's having, she's having moments that she's re not reflecting, but it's it, having trauma. She's, she's experiencing stress attacks, you know, all that. But it happens in the first episode, and that is it. It is completely and utterly dropped. Now, that's something that is not, not well done. Not, not the best part of a character, but you could have... There's, there's no redeeming, goddammit. It, it, it's just, it's just a, a worthless thing, thing to drop. Because the thing is, is that it's that, that we see her meet Godzilla. She had a face-to-face -face moment with Godzilla in in twenty in, in G Day, and she has a face. Yes, two face-to-face -face encounters with Godzilla later on in the series. One in in uh, Africa, and then one at Sismundi. And she shows absolutely no reaction. What I think should have happened is maybe, um, maybe a bit of a, of, I don't know, I, I guess like resentment towards Godzilla. I feel like it could have been very interesting to see how Shaw, Shaw sees, like maybe Shaw sees Godzilla as the thing, I, I, th I think what he says in a series is that he's trying to help Godzilla or something, dealing with the monsters. I, I don't know. Like, it would have been interesting to see him trying to, like, n he knows that Godzilla is wh what Godzilla's role is, and all he's trying to do is help them, is help him, kind of like a uh, like ancient times or whatever. And she's showing some resentment to it, but she warms up to the idea. I don't know. Like she learned, she learned the true nature of Godzilla. That would have been quite interesting, but that wasn't part of the thing that was uh, here. It, it wasn't the the main. That wasn't what she here to focus on. And then, and then the other part of the character, which I think was very much very wasted, is the fact that um she had she 
has the same problem her dad is. So in the in the show, one of the main things that Hiroshi Randa has uh, has two families, one in Japan and one in America and one in San Francisco. And the one of the main plot points is that it, he was wrong to cheat on on both of the families, which, yeah, that that is something wrong to do. And then we later le- learn on later on the line that uh, Kate cheated on her girlfriend with another person. So, yeah, it's a, a bit hypocritical. But what I'm gonna guess that they were trying to do is to show that. She that Kate knows uh, Kate realized this and realized that she did the same thing and that they're kind of alike and that I don't know like she's mad at both herself and her father being so I don't know like trying to find like I don't it, it, it's so weirdly it, I, I I see what they were going for having the character be hypocritical like this. And maybe, like, maybe she realized to err of her ways or whatever sometime, at some point, like, that what she did was wrong. And now that her dad did this, now she realized that her dad did the same thing. She's coming here to, um, to gave him a piece of her mind from experience or whatever. That this is, that you're just hurting two parties. But it wasn't, it was never something that actually happened in the show or that was very well um established so it was another part of a wasted character where we just see her kind of oh it's like she's like her father or whatever and it was never brought up ever again because her and her father don't meet don't genuinely meet until the last episode the final episode now could this be brought up in season two possibly Will this will season two happen? We don't know. So that's the thing. Like you, if you don't like, like I said with Skull Island, if you don't know that season two is gonna happen, if you're not one hundred percent sure that season two is going to happen, do not, do not do thing. Do not leave such open threads. Excuse me. Do not leave such open, th- such loose threads that it's a it becomes. That if a season two doesn't happen, it becomes a, it becomes something that is a critique of the show. Because yeah, sometimes loose and loose, loose threads, whatever that can be solved by a, by like a tie-in novel or something, a tie-in comic book, right? But like leaving several like. Leaving a whole plot line of the show, compl- like leaving this whole thing, we just this is the thing, this is the thing, and leaving it completely and utterly unresolved in the show, not very good. So yeah, also Kate Randa is kind of, I guess, one of the better human. I, I don't know. I guess because of the better human character, but she's, I guess, tolerable. I I guess she's tar- tolerable. I don't know. So, yeah. Next up is, I think, I, I don't know, I think maybe the, one of the better characters, maybe because he doesn't get fucking, I don't know, they, they, everyone's just written weirdly. Kentaro Randa, the Kate's half uh, brother. So, who, so, what's up with Kentaro? Not much. He's not much of a character. He... I don't know. I, I guess I understand him being sort of hostile. I don't know. He's just being hostile at the start. But he continues being hostile. Everyone's just hostile to you. That's, like, that's one of the things that people don't like about this show. Everyone's just bickering for no reason. And everyone's just kind of arguing. And the thing is, he's not much of a character. We, we learned about him in, um, in May... But, yeah, he just kind of sits there and does kind of nothing. 
he's kind of a nothing character and nothing really came of it and so one of the weirdest things is that when he I guess when he starts screaming at his dad for leaving her his her his daughter to die like, like leaving Kate to like oh you led Kate to this and now she's dead because of you and he's just he is and he sees his dad crying on the floor and and he's just like yeah you did this to yourself it just feels like it feels very unsympathetic and honestly it makes him an asshole I understand I understand like finding out that that like your dad I don't know. It, it it just at that point, it's not even his fault. It's not even his dad's fault that that uh that that Kate went on to to go to uh, the fucking Kazakhstan, where the hell they ended up in. It's not even. It, it doesn't. It doesn't just follow. It's just he he gave up at that point. Like I I don't know. If, I don't even know if 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 Hiroshi went to Kazakhstan. Like, he, he just, she just, like, well, we gotta follow this map, and then went to Kazakhstan, and it's like, well, <laughs> and now Kentaro's here, like, you got her killed, it was your fault, and like, what the fuck? At that point, it wasn't, at that point, it was her own doing. That wasn't Hiroshi's fault. <laughs> he made a map, right, he made a map, and, which was based on Bill's sort of theory, and then, Kate followed the map. And, you know, like, where, where would, where would, uh, where, where would, uh, Lee go? And it's, oh, the Kazakhstan, oh, definitely. That's when he lost, uh, uh, fucking, I forgot the name, Keiko. Oh, let's go, uh, that's there. There is, there was no, like, that wasn't Hiroshi's fault for, oh my god, that wasn't Hiroshi's fault. Also, I know he went to Kazakhstan. I think he went to Kazakhstan. Like, but before they... I don't know. Just fucking useless. Just fucking very useless. And it just seems like Kentaro's an asshole. I didn't I didn't like that. I was like, well, that's not his fault. Sure, he made the map, but it was her choosing to fucking go with it. And because she wasn't... She wasn't, like, at that point, she wasn't even, like, trying to follow Hiroshi. Like, she wasn't trying to, to follow her dad's, like, plan. It was just, like, well, he, well, Lee has the map. And she wants to get to where Lee is. She wants to find Lee. So where would Lee be? Where, well, where he lost Keiko is one of the, that's one of the points. Let's just go there, and I and th- at that point it's Lee's fault that she that, he, that. But I mean, she wasn't dead, so you know, just fucking I don't know. Right? I didn't like that scene. Kentaro just looked like an ass. So yeah, Kentaro, not not my favorite, but the next one it's not a lot of people's favorite. May Hewitt or whatever her real name is. I forgot her real name. I think it's like fucking. I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember. It's such a non-issue in the show. May is to a lot of people the worst character in the show, and I kind of understand why. Um, she is the most combative out of everyone here. It's it's clear, very clear. She's the most combative out of everyone here, which is not a bad character trait. Not a bad character trait. But. It's it becomes annoying when you realize that she's just fighting fucking everybody, and um yeah, she's fighting everybody. She just um fucking it's it's so annoying. She's she does I think one of the worst things a protagonist could ever do, and that she. Pretty much says that she wants to go home and she will and she 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 will go home. Let me tell you, she will go home. 
and she pretty much leaves the fucking the hero south to die in the desert. Yeah, that's genuinely what happens. She just leaves out the character, the other characters die in the desert, and they just fucking forgive her for it. Like, oh yeah, no, you left us on the desert. We have nowhere, nowhere to go. But yeah, no, we forgive you. And then she starts having a thing with Kate. I guess it's bizarre. It's it's such it, it's such a weird character that you just like fuck you. <laughs> like everyone here is horrible. And f- fucking, I, I just how do you how does this happen? Okay, I, I don't know. Just genuinely very weird. I I don't know how this ever happened. How this thing was like. <laughs> How do you write this character? How do you write a character like this? Your main hero, like, yep. Well, I'm. I'm this is what this is what it is. And then she goes back to her old employer, and that becomes nothing. It's like, oh, now we're a prince or whatever. I, I don't fucking know. What the fuck is was the whole point of that goddamn scene? Well, what was the point? What was the point of the goddamn May plot? It added nothing other than an apex. I mean, I I like I like the backstory, but it wasn't fucking worth it when we got the worst scenes in the whole show. Like I don't I don't care, I don't care about May. She left them out to die in the desert, pretty much. Like yep. Well, you guys can fucking stay here. I know we we we're gonna, we're, we're gonna fucking go here and we'll like I, like she just left them no transportation. Pretty much just, just left to die and like the only the only reason that they got out of fucking. They got out of, um, the only reason they got out of, um, uh, like, uh, Algeria or the hell they went, is because Tim was there. Fucking best character, Tim. So, yeah, um, May's awful. <laughs> May's an awful character, and I hate her. So, yeah. Next up is Lee Shaw, which is sort of kind of like the main character in the show, and that's, not really. Kate is the main character, but Lee is there for much more time than Kate is. And Lee had some things that were interesting. I gotta say. But I don't know if it they really translate well. I feel like him being sort of I feel like this character didn't really know much about the about the monsters and the titans and all that and him sort of becoming this ambassador for the titans or whatever is very interesting a very interesting plot point seeing how this character who at some point didn't really believe in the in the titans and he's just like the titans are part of the environment are part of this and we need to do our part in protecting the world it's very, it would be very interesting if there was, uh, if there was something to really anchor that thing because we just saw him like uh, being shown by Monarch and being out uh, of this crazy person. I I don't know. It's it's very weird what they did with, with what they did. And Lee, yeah, they, they, they did some interesting things with him. Um, he's apparently he's apparently not as old as he's supposed to be. He missed out on twenty years. He was kept in a fake retirement home in Japan. Some some very interesting things that were kind of done with the character and him like slowly slowly but very very but very um you know uh, obviously very in a very obvious way evolving to become this character that, that you know that, that that respects the titans and respects what they're doing on Monarch. It's it, it was interesting, but I feel like it was a bit rushed because they had to because at some because uh, one of the episodes he just he, he just storms the base and it's never and he never acts like that ever again. He acts like a villain and then he's like and then we're like oh now you're evil or whatever the fuck and it comes out of nowhere. 
So, yeah, um... And then he, he was like, oh yeah, I, I, I gotta, we're helping Godzilla by closing all these portals. And, uh... He was like, he's like that villain, then he's a hero, then he sacrifices himself. Like, what the fuck are you trying to do with the character? Like, what, what, what are you trying to do with this character? He's clearly not working. It is very much not working. So, yeah, um, there's that. Lee, Lee was pretty good, but I feel like he was a bit rushed. Next up, Keiko Mura, or Keiko Randa, whatever the hell you want to call her. Um, you know, I, I liked Keiko. She was. She's that person. She cares about the Titans. She knows that they're they're not monsters. They're animals, and she's very smart and all that. And you know, she's a pretty good character. I don't know. Just and then and then she appeared in in that, and I kind of, I did like her then then, but kind of brought out a few plot points, like maybe like uh. Uh, like a, 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 a few cool plot points, but she doesn't really do much. And she, then it's not really like, oh well, but this character, she, she lost fucking. She lost. She would have been dead by 2015. If I'm being honest, she would have been dead, and she is, I think, younger than her son at this point in the timeline. So it's it's very interesting. To see that, but yeah, no, I feel like what they did with Keiko was interesting, and but I feel like the weird love triangle thing was a, 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 a bit weird. But you know, um, whatever, whatever, right? Something that they really matter, and uh, in the end, I guess because the, Lee cared about Keiko or whatever the hell. And yeah, um, there's that. But Keiko, uh, uh, she's one of the better characters, but because she's fucking tar, she, she's at least likable. <laughs> she's at least likable. She doesn't bake her. She doesn't do anything like that. And I liked her reactions in the, in the tenth episode. I think it was very good. But yeah, that's we almost have to see Keiko. Next up is Bill Randa. Yippee, Bill Randa. Woo. Okay. Bill Randa returns, kind of, from Skull Island, and we see his family here and all that, and, um... Yeah, no, um, uh uh-huh. It's... It, it, uh, he's not much, doesn't do much in this series, I, I feel. He's there, we learn about the Iron Dragon, due to him and how, like, that, that, the, the, the USS Lawton was destroyed by it. I feel like that was interesting, but aside from that, not really much is done with the character. Except from that, and he's central to the plot, but he's not the character himself. He's not very, uh, he's not very, uh, I guess, active. So, yeah, it's, he is what he is, I guess. It, it's kind of disappointing to see this character that is returning from the movies. 100% he's, he's from the movies and he doesn't really do much which I mean you can't because he has to die in, in Skull Island Except for that not, not much of a not much of a character I gotta say but yeah I feel like Bill was enjoyable and his moments with Keiko were sweet and all that but except for that eh not much of a character and next up, Hiroshi Randa. Woohoo! Shit. Now, Hiroshi Randa, again, bad parent, definitely wasn't there. Um, but, like, she doesn't really do much. Like, one of the memory critiques, like, the show is entirely about finding him, like, oh, my dad is gone. And, uh, we need to find them. And then we get this wild dude shit. They find him in episode 6. He it, it, the, the plot about the show stops being about Hiroshi. It, Hiroshi's gone. Right? They find him. He's gone. He shows up later on the line. He's fucking, I'm here now, bitch. And, and then he shows up 
every time after that. He's he is like so it's so weird. Now he's working for Apex and also like Mira or uh, Keiko, who is the fucking was the founder of Monarch, is now at Apex. That thing has to be fucking explored in a season two in a movie because holy fuck, that's huge. But yeah, no, Hiroshi Randa, not much of a character. It's kind of stupid the way the fuck it, they, 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 they did, they, they, they made him, uh, how they, how they wrote the story around them. It's very weird. But yeah, no, that's, that, that's Randa. Other characters, Tim, I guess is the best character because he's not fucking, he is not insufferable. He's, he's just trying his best. So yeah, Tim is great. Um, Sandra's sister, the, the, the mother from fucking um, uh, Fro- Ford, Ford Brody's mother from uh, t- 2014. She has a sister in the show. She's, she's, she's fine. She doesn't really do much. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's pretty. That's pretty much it. So yeah, the characters not very good. The monsters, they're the best part. Duh. So yeah. The monsters, I start off with Godzilla, so we're gonna go in, uh, I guess, order of appearance, kind of. Or I guess, I guess, like, the order of importance. Godzilla. Godzilla is not very present in this show, and something that, I think one of the, one of the directors did, that they would have fixed this, they would have, they would have made the show have more Godzilla, then why did they fucking make it have more Godzilla? If monster movies need more Godzilla, then why didn't you make a fucking example? Put more Godzilla. That's, that, that. But yeah, no, Godzilla's cool, obviously. Duh, he has to be. Toho wouldn't let him. Toho wouldn't let Godzilla be uncool. But yeah, so it's mostly about him, but kind of not because he shows up like three times in this goddamn show and then he fucks off. Um. So yeah, honestly. I feel like Godzilla is one of those things that just doesn't fucking need to be in the show to for it to function. I feel like Godzilla can be swapped out for swapped out for like any monster, and it would have been the same. Aside from you know G Day, I feel like it would have been the exact same thing if they if if the monster that shows up in the desert is not Godzilla, it's like Anguirus or a Baragon. If they want to go fucking d- deeper into this shit. Or like anyone else, fucking like just a new monster or something. Like I don't know. Like I feel like Godzilla's very just not, um, n- not something that's very. He's not a he's not a monster that's needed. He is needed to bring in the 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 the, the, the view the eyes of the viewers because the, because uh, Monster Godzilla monsters become the number one show on Apple TV Plus. So yeah, there's that. Very weird that it is not on HBO Max or, or on Mats, but I'm guessing that's that, that that's because of I, I heard that some theories that that's because Mats got mad at, at, at like at legendary for even for even fucking like attempting like even considering the idea of putting uh, of premiering Godzilla vs Kong on Netflix all those years back. So then legendary had to do things on their own. So that's why it's not on Mats. But I don't know. But hey, I am, uh, I, I liked, I mean, it, I don't know, I would have preferred it to be on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, no, um, Godzilla is really inconsequential, so it doesn't really need to be here. Except for, you know, bringing in the viewers and all that. Next up, the Ion Dragon, which, dope name, but it is the worst monster here. Um, yeah, no, um, Ion Dragon is, uh, <laughs> he doesn't really do much, he's the weakest monster in the entire fucking monster verse, like, by props, like, by, by, by fucking default, he absolutely, he gets so fucking blasted by Godzilla, he gets torn apart, literally legitimately torn apart, it is insane what fucking happens to him. And you know, eh, 
think he doesn't really, I feel like the Ion Dragon should have, a, should have, should have had, a, boy, my ear, <laughs> should have had a, uh, a, a bigger one, a bigger presence, like, and maybe even a bigger power. Is that, like, just, there's something that gives him just an iota of a fucking chance against Godzilla, but no, he goes in there, gets his ass beaten, gets fucking killed, we're never gonna see that thing, thing again. And... That's it for the Iron Dragon. Now, there's something, something I gotta say about the Iron Dragon. It is technically the first Titan to be discovered. It's the first time to be discovered officially in the timeline, 1952, that the Iron Dragon was discovered for Godzilla. And fucking doesn't happen. Like, nothing, like, nobody has any reaction to to the Iron Dragon ever again. Like, fucking, the Ion Dragon could have been replaced by a male, like, for the last episode, the Ion Dragon could be replaced by a male Budo, and nobody would have fucking cared. It would have been the same rather than reaction. As I remember even recognizing, oh, that's the, that's, that, that, that's the male Mudo. Or whatever the fuck. Um, but the Ion Dragon does nothing. Like, I, when we let, when we let see him in, uh, in, in Atis Mundi, one, we see him twice in Yasu's Mundi. He get, he is the one that attacks, um, uh, the, the one that, that attacks the uh, Lee's first expedition. We don't we don't see any reaction from him there. And then we once again meet him in Yasu's Mundi when Keiko, Lee, May, and Kate are gonna escape. So, and one, we don't see any reaction from May, from, from May, from Keiko, and we see any reaction from Lee towards the Iron Dragon, which should have been a big thing. Like, oh my god, that's the fucking Iron Dragon. That's the first, di- that's the first Titan we, we, we've seen, and just no reaction. But you know, Iron Dragon is kind of disappointing, honestly. You get some fucking ass beaten, and then we never see, we never hear from him again. So, yeah, Iron Dragon, not the best Titan, not, not the best Titan here. Uh, next up is the Frost Vark. Now the Frost Vark has, I feel like the most interesting design, interesting concept. He steals heat from sources. That's how he gets. That's how he gets his uh, his heat that he needs to survive in the cold. And it's very interesting. Too bad he fucking dies in the seventh episode or eighth. I don't remember when it was. He just dies in the seventh episode. It's like yeah, he he's dead. Maybe he's in 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 that Mundi somewhere. I I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, no. Frostbark is very cool. But aside from him being like just there, not really much. I, I kind of hope we see more Frostbark later on the line. But aside from that, I don't know. Just just Frostbark is the Frostbark, and that's all I gotta say about him. Some others. The Endo Swarm versus Endopede. Um, this thing, um, it's it, it's just up for like five seconds. I would have preferred that we saw the Endopede more, which the Endopede is the it's like the big insect thing that drags them down. I feel like that could have been if we got a more thing, maybe in a fight, it could have been cool. But aside from that, we we didn't really see anything. Uh, but yeah, no. Endopede is cool. Bramble Boar showed up for five fucking seconds and fucked off. Um, not very interesting. And the Mantle Claw. I heard it's kind of based on the, the crash we saw in Scotland, but then again, didn't fucking care about those either. So, um, yeah, uh, not much to say. And also, uh, Kong. Yeah, Kong shows up, but Kong is there for five seconds, like fucking any, any other monster. And just kind of nothing. So, yeah, cool to see Kong here. In 2017, and he has his. It looks like he's older than he is in 2024. So yeah. Yeah. Moving on to some of the addition to the monsters that this series made. So we saw the origins of Monarch, which is something that we kind of saw in Godzilla Aftermath, which I actually have here, or after. What the fuck is called? Godzilla Awakening, motherfucker. I got it completely wrong. Godzilla Awakening. But it's very much uh, not 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 the uh, it's um 
it's it's very different and kind of retcons awakening but yeah no i actually don't really mind it retconning awakening because awakening was a tiny novel and there's a full-on canon show so yeah no i i don't mind i i really don't mind it retconning awakening and you know the whole thing about the castle bravo and all that i don't i don't i don't want to retcon it i really don't so yeah um there's that and you know like a bunch of other things that we see the uh we see um fucking we see how everything really leads up to, like not gone but kind of 2018. I, I kind of I kind of wish it led up to more of King of the Monsters and because we see Monarch here in this show not having a lot of it doesn't have a lot of the technology we see in them having in 2019 which is not that long of a stretch but yeah no I, I, I it's not it's not a huge stretch of time but I feel like we I feel like we should have seen them having more um advanced technologies maybe they get that later on like now that now that they're getting helped out by apets i feel like it's only the should, should we get support and maybe they are being helped out by apets the whole thing but i i don't know like where does where the fuck does monarch go uh I, I, after 2019 because we don't we, we, we see them in Cuts over to Kong, but they don't kind of they, they don't do much. They don't, they don't really do much. So so yeah. So that we're, we're talking about apets, which that was kind of unintentional. So next up is apets. So apets, kind of cool that we see their origins here and kind of what they've been up to since about since before. Uh, I guess over to Kong, twenty twenty four. So yeah, I mean it's pretty cool we see him and we see how far back the Mechazilla project was in development, which I mean obviously had to be quite far back, but then the whole like Ghidorah thing happened. And uh, yeah, they, they, I feel like it was pretty cool see seeing Apex here become a much bigger part. Kinda of wanna see how they how the hell they they're on Skull Island. Maybe they're the reason why it's completely the fucked by the time of Godzilla vs. Kong. But yeah, um, there's that. The Apex, pretty cool seeing them here. I was saying, really cool. Um, next up, the Axis Mundi. Now, I have quite a bit of problems with the Axis Mundi. Now, this is something that... Is this me? But I don't like it. Not one bit. Now... Pocket dimension inside of a, inside of the Earth that leads to Hollow Earth. Fine. It was just if if the Hollow Earth wasn't fucking changed like three times already. Okay, so in Godzilla vs Kong, it's just like you need a Titan to get down it. That's pretty much it. Like, you don't you don't go through this tunnel system or there's not there's not, there's no access Mundi. You just go to fucking Hollow Earth. Fine. I don't care. Uh, you need you need you need a tight center to go there. Fine, and Godzilla just a hole down there. Fine, I don't, I really, really don't care. Just give me a second. But you know, um, and then Godzilla just hold on to it. Now there's this whole other fucking thing you need to go through to get to Hollow Earth. And then just fucking, and then it's like, why? Why half of this? Why half this? It breaks canon. Don't do this. Don't do this. No. It's so useless. It's such a useless fucking thing to add. Why? Why do this yourself? Show no. Don't. 
Don't add a weird concept that go nowhere. Anyways. I just wanted to applaud the show, which, oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, so, the plot is fucking weird. Like I said earlier, the, the, the whole dad thing gets fucking tossed around first fucking half of the series. Gets dropped later on the line. And then he, we see him again, but then there's the... So, uh, first, uh, let's go to the users of the lore, first of all. So, we see things from 2014 in Skull Island, which, pretty cool. We're getting actual connections between both of them. Both, both of those time periods and one of the things that's cool is that this happens between both before kill the monsters which is a time where we don't see which is confirmed that we don't see godzilla we do not see godzilla at all between 20, 2014 and 2019 technically we do see him in 2015 or i guess the genuine year the, the, the great year of I don't know how long it's been 1959 in the goddamn canon in, 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 in the Asus Mundi, but it's 1959 in the Asus Mundi, so we kind of see him very, so we see him very sporadic, it's kind of cool. We see Castle Bravo, which is a different version of Castle Bravo than it was in 2014, but whatever. We see Castle Bravo, we see, we see Kong, we see Apex, we see, so it's very cool that using all these, all these pieces of the lore that, um, that you know makes it cool, makes it you know makes it cool, and it could have gone the, the, the plot could have gone there could have gone ways, but it just didn't. So yeah, contradictions. It's a lot of contradictions here. Like the in the entirety the entirety of the Bill Randall plot, fucking there's no way that could have happened. Like uh, like there, there was no time. In Skull Island, for that to genuinely happen. So yeah, I, I don't know. And the 20th century and 21st century plot lines, I, I like them. They're very. They're at first they were unconnected, but then they became connected. That's I feel like that was pretty cool, seeing these both become a connected time. And you know, it, it was it was something pretty cool. But aside from that, I feel like the plot is kind of loose it's very very weird very very loose just nothing genuinely impactful nothing great nothing good <laughs> nothing good really came out of the plot here so yeah um there's that i guess <laughs> there there is really just that <laughs> that's all i gotta say not i'm, I'm not done but yeah so yeah, let's talk about the future for this show. Um, will there be season two? I certainly do hope so and think so. This is, this is the biggest show that Apple TV Plus has at the moment, and much, much uh, smaller shows have gotten multiple seasons. So I'm going to limit and say that this show will probably get a second season, and we'll see it becoming. It's one of the mainstays. I feel like this is one of the shows that should get a second season. Or has the potential to be getting second seasons and to be showing much more things. I feel like this show has potential. Now, what will season two be about? I really couldn't say. Maybe more Godzilla? Probably not, since we're in 2017. And we don't see Godzilla until 2019. Unless we do another two-year time skip, I don't see that happening. So maybe instead of this season, we, we, we're gonna we, we're gonna we're gonna focus on Kong in season two. Maybe maybe we're gonna focus on Kong, but I don't know. But yeah, there's that. Um, next up, maybe some Godzilla It's Kong connections. Um, I don't know if this will have any Godzilla It's Kong connections. This is coming out. Godzilla It's Kong was pushed forward to March of 29th, 2024. So maybe we'll see, maybe we'll see more things coming out here. Maybe you see, I doubt we'll see Apex in Godzilla, in Godzilla It's, uh, it's Kong. I'll have, I heavily doubt it. Maybe we see Keiko. Maybe we see any of these characters come back. Maybe I, I we haven't seen that from the from, from anywhere or anything. But yeah, no. Maybe you'll see that from the show later down the line. But I don't know. Certainly weird. Certainly a weird little thing that the show has. That it's it's in a very weird position. I gotta say, this show 
is very much tied with, the, with everything that's happening here, but it's just kind of not... Not very, um, connected, I guess. I don't know. It, it could have connections, definitely. But will it? I don't know. Maybe it will. Maybe it wouldn't. Who knows? We'll have to see later on the line. So yeah, uh, to finish it off, to kind of just put it into a whole, um, I guess, wrap it up in a neat little bow, Marna Garcia Monsters is an okay show. If you want monster action, you're going to get it sometimes. A lot of episodes, some episodes are pretty slow. You're not going to get a lot of monster action earlier, but so... The, plot, the human plot isn't very, isn't very interesting. Um, aside from like the, the, the fit, it's a very mixed bag. It's it's a mixed bag. If you want to watch it, go ahead. If you don't, don't. So yeah, it's all really gotta say. I hope I was not unintelligible by like, this entire review. I was I was speaking way too fucking fast. I feel, but you know. Um, I hope that that's very concise and that that's something that, that you can understand. And, uh, yeah, um, so yeah, Mario Sea Monsters was disappointing, sadly. I, my, the thing I've said for some very long time, I wish there was good kaiju television shows. Weird. Gamma Rebirth was a step in the right direction. It wasn't the best animated thing. It wasn't the best. It was uh, not the best animation, but it was it was a good story, a good enough story. We need something with a lot more budget and something that has. If you're gonna, if you're gonna go animated, which is the best medium I think for kaiju, we need something that has much more budget and much more recognizable. Something like Singular Point with the plot of Gamma Rebirth. That's something that we need. And I think that's how, but one of the things that I feel like Monarch really suffers from is the fact that it tries to be a human-centric plotline with monsters. It's a Monarch show, not a Godzilla show. So, it's not the best, and that's why a lot of the people are probably gonna be turned off by a show. You're not getting what you came here for. You're getting you're, what you're try, what you're getting is writers trying to make a deep plot with human characters, with complex human characters, but they don't succeed. When it when there are monsters, it's pretty good. But when they aren't, it's not that not not that great. It feels like they are trying to do this very complex human plot and trying to rush through it in 10 episodes that are each an hour long. So, very interesting that this happened at all. But yeah, no. Um, inclusion, like I said, mid back. If you want to watch it, go watch it. If you don't, you don't. So yeah. What did you guys think of Monocracy and Monsters? Leave in the comments below. Follow me on uh, follow us media fay, uh, media I mean underscore buffet on Twitter, at the entertainment at the e at the end on Twitter as well. Uh, at media uh, uh, at the entertainment on YouTube. This one with the e at the end. At uh, media fay just media fay on Spotify. Not media fay podcast. Those are other guys. And for bonus content eventually. At Media Buffet uh, YT slash Media Buffet Bonus on YouTube. For me, at Mercury S Cheese on Twitter, Mercury C Cheese on Twitch, and at Mercury SC on YouTube. So, yeah, that's about it. See ya.